You guys ask me questions and now it's about the time to have them answered. A uh, happy good Sunday morning to all of you with the beautiful church bells ringing. This is what always gives me the feeling of being home. I'm currently in Morja, which is a town near the border to France here in southern Switzerland. So this is actually the place where I always went for skiing. Now you see there is no snow because it's October. I really love the bells here, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah, this is actually normally a typical winter wonderland. Not at this season, but actually I just saw over there, there is still some remaining snow from yesterday. So later I'm going to take a walk a little bit into the valley of Tovasier and then I will show you where I always went as a child for some hiking. It's actually very beautiful and usually there is nobody around there. So the first question was asked by Timothy Liston and he wonders which is the most beautiful place that I've ever visited. The most beautiful place that I've ever visited is in China. It's a beautiful traditional village called Fenghuang. It's very stereotypical by the river. Really really beautiful. It was very very serene over there and just nearby there is another amazing village called Fu Rongchen which has a waterfall just in the middle and then of course the famous Zhang Jie National Park that one was also breathtaking all in all this was definitely the best trip I had in Asia the second question was asked by Marius from Poland and he wonders which is the most beautiful place that I've ever visited in Switzerland. So that is very difficult because there are so many places I absolutely love. So if I had to choose, I would pick a region instead of one particular place. And that would be the canton of Ticino because this region is just full of amazing places for swimming, hiking, beautiful villages, the culture is amazing. Yes, I think this region is the most beautiful one in my opinion in Switzerland and yeah that's why I travel there again and again because it's so amazing. Alessandra from Milano, Italy, she wonders how I managed to travel during this corona pandemic. Well, very simple solution. I mainly travel around Switzerland, just like now. I think this is the easiest solution. There are so many places that I have visited because of Corona. There are so many places that I'm going to visit because of Corona. So this year, I definitely can cover a lot of places here in Switzerland. How traveling is going to be next year, I have no idea. But what I can tell you is I would love to visit again Indonesia. Bhutan, the Philippines, Malaysia. Yeah, I greatly miss Asia. Ataula Brohi from Pakistan. He wonders which is my favorite culture of Indonesia. So here it's important that I'm just sharing my opinion, which I like the most. And I'm not giving a rating which one is the best or better because I think everybody has a different taste and that's great. So my favorite culture in Indonesia would be the Balinese Hindu culture. This because it is full of different tales and legends. It has a lot of different forms of arts. It has a lot of masks, idols. I just really love this culture so much. And then what's also very unique, it's not just like Hinduism, it's actually Hinduism mixed with Buddhism and with Indonesian animism. This is really something that I liked a lot. But there are also many other cultures in Indonesia. For example, the Minangkabau culture in West Sumatra. And of course the culture from Java, which is a beautiful mix of 
Islamic and Hindu culture. It's very unique and the people there, they're very proud of it. And then he also wonders which is my favorite food in Indonesia. So that would be ayam betutu. It's a Balinese dish based on chicken or sometimes on duck. And then what's also really great is pork satay because <laughs> Yeah, myself coming from Switzerland, we are crazy over pork. But now I have to give him also a halal option. And when it comes to halal food, I would say the best one in Indonesia that I tried so far is the one of Padang, the Minangkabau food. This was really great. I really loved so much the beef rendang. Very delicious. Or the shrimps with sambal balado. Justina Apriani from Bali, Indonesia. She wonders, how do I get to know more about the cultures while I'm traveling? So what I'm doing prior to my travels, I will do a lot of research. I will see what is actually interesting to me and what I would like to portray in my videos and my photos. So a lot of research is happening before I travel. And then while I travel, for example, I can go to museums. There I will get quite an insight into the local culture. And the other strategy that I follow is always to get in touch with locals. Because here you can always get some great new contacts. Actually, I made some good friends on my travels. And through these people, I actually can learn a lot about the culture. Because who knows better its own culture than the people from the place itself, right? Isudin Hamdi from Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. He wonders whether I would ever take the Trans-Siberian Railway. Yes, I would love to do that. I actually used to work in Russia for three months. It was really amazing. I was five times in total in Russia. I also learned how to speak Russian. Yagavaryu <laughs> Paruski. And yeah, this country actually really fascinates me because there's so many different ethnic groups and cultures. And the Trans-Siberian Railway will take you through different regions and cultures of Russia. For example, it will pass through Buryatia, which is a Buddhist region in Russia. Yeah, this is really interesting, right? So Ulanude is one of the stops I would love to do on the Trans-Siberian Railway. And then, of course, I would love to end in Vladivostok, which is basically the other end of Russia at the Pacific. It was a very beautiful trail and now I'm going up to the mountain by taking the cable lift and I'm going to answer the rest of the questions up there. All right, so now I'm here at the Foyeuse. Normally I come here for skiing, but now I'm coming here as a pedestrian. So this is the ticket. Raquel Jacob from the Philippines. She wonders how do I cope with the stress of uploading videos every week? Yeah, I do have to say YouTube is stressful. It's not as easy as people think. A lot of people, they tell me, oh, you're having such a nice life. You can always travel and yeah, yeah, you're taking a bit of your videos. But that's not how it is. Like, especially if you're not taking low quality videos, then it's not just about just taking videos. There's a lot of work involved in taking videos. And then after that, the whole process of editing videos, it's quite tiring. And myself, I do have a 100% job. I work in the medical industry, and then I can only use the time that I have after work. And it's here very important that I balance between my life and YouTube and my work. So usually when I come home, I either spend some time with my family, or with my friends and then I also take a little bit care of myself and then the remaining time I will use to prepare videos until 11, 12 and then I will have to go to bed because the next morning is calling and then I have to go to work. So as you see it's not very easy but if 
you're taking good care of yourself, then I think you can be a healthy and successful YouTuber. And now I'm almost up here on the foyers. There is quite some snow. It's really cool. It's just beginning of October, but myself, I'm very, very much enjoying this place right now, especially off skiing season. freezing so I'm very quickly going inside because I really don't want to get a cold especially during coronavirus so I think it's a great idea to go for lunch and then answer your remaining questions I'm just back from lunch now outside a great view over the Dent du Midi which are called the teeth of the south <laughs> yeah I really like being up here with at least a little bit snow that's why I have to wear sunglasses because it's very bright and you can see there's still some people who do biking that's amazing that's really something I would love to try out even though it's a little bit dangerous I think so the next question that I would like to answer to you is from Abdurrahman from Kerala, India. And he wonders which is the place that I can keep traveling again and again. So there is actually a place that I keep going again and again for almost 20 years or maybe even more, I'm not too sure. So that is beautiful Lago di Como. It's in northern Italy. That region is just so fascinating and that's why I keep going there again. It's also a family tradition. And yeah, I do have to say this is definitely one of the most beautiful regions in the entire world. So, and now I'm going again down. It's very freezing up here. I'm not really wearing the right clothes for this kind of weather. So, time to go down to Morjan. It was really nice up here. I'm not even sure if I ever have been to the foyers in October, especially with a little bit of snow. So beautiful, just take a look. Wow, amazing. And here you can see the people who go for biking, they'll take these crazy slopes. Wow. They must have a lot of courage. <laughs> Looks very dangerous, but I think it's very fun. Actually, maybe I'll try something like this. Maybe not this slope right here. It seems a bit difficult, but overall I think it's something very interesting to try out. enjoyed watching this video thank you very much for all your questions it was a great pleasure to answer them I'm already looking forward to the next episode like this so please send me your questions regarding traveling culture my travel experiences and my YouTube journey I'll be most happy to answer them I hope you all have enjoyed watching this video it was a great pleasure to answer all your questions again thank you so much the next video again will be about traveling in Switzerland. Till then, please take good care and we're going to see each other very soon.